Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is sat chat time. I've been um, kind of playing with my light today. Everything was looking so bright. I ran out of my foundation yet last week and um, I only put makeup on once a week. I like to film <laughs> on Fridays and uh, and so the makeup that I usually wear is actually a little too dark. Um, so the color I have on now is actually my skin color and it looks really really bright really light so i just turned down my light so hopefully i'm not like blinding you like you know you'll be snow blind by the end of the video um it is 3:43 on a friday afternoon i've got quite a bit done this week it's been a good week and i hope you're having a good week and weekend because it's saturday morning probably when you're watching this um i've got a mess this studio is such a mess we had a um a zoom crafty night last night so kathy set it up again and uh lorraine tracy and cindy and kathy obviously came and it was fun um but i left all my stuff out and um, I haven't got a chance to pick up yet. Uh, I've got a bunch of different projects I've been working on. In fact, I've got um, one for Critique Clubs actually already up. Oh, this is, I was actually working on Pastel Met for the first time. This is what I was playing with yesterday um, when we were on our little Zoom, our little Zoom crafty night. Uh, thanks Mimi for the Pastel Met, by the way. I'm just, just finally now getting a chance to try it. Um, so I was just kind of playing around with a few different pencils, some Derwent Signatures, which are these vintage pencils. And, um, some Prismacolors, I, th I think I have some Derwent drawing in there. It was kind of fun. That's nuts. I think what I'm going to do, because let me show you this. Um, I recommend these books. I know I've mentioned them before, probably not for a while, but this is set, a series of books by Gary Green. And also there's another author too, but it's by Northlight Books and it's called the Artist Photo Reference Series. And um, now I'm feeling like my light is not bright enough. I hope it is. I'm sorry if things are weird. Um... And I really like these because what they're, they're, they're kind of no frills, but they'll be like lots of different, like this is a magnolia spread. So I'm just like kind of picking and choosing, sorry for the glare, picking and choosing different flowers here to add to my composition. <clears throat> and they have it for like wildlife and barns and landscapes and nautical and all these different things. Um, they're great. They're out of print, but you can get them used on Amazon. And I had a couple, I think I had... Uh, I think I had flowers and wildlife and then like over the years I would just search on Amazon and I found a bunch used I don't think I paid more one I paid like $25 for and that was the songbirds one because I love to draw birds um, but I think for the most part I paid around uh, like three to seven dollars for one of those books I think the retail price was like $25 on those um, I was in the Northlight book club back in like the late 90s and that's how I got the other two and went up uh, with a bunch of other art books, but they I highly recommend them if you want to have like your own physical reference library at home. It's really nice. That way you're not like beholden to looking stuff up on the internet. Um, you don't have internet for whatever reason, or you just don't want to get sucked into the rabbit hole. If you're like me, um, you can get sucked into the internet really easily and lose your train of thought and your focus. So that's one way I keep myself from getting like down the rabbit holes. I will just avoid going on the internet uh, for reference material. Uh, but anyway, I really like that Magnolia. And um, I think what I might do is actually do a real time tutorial, but just do like maybe a bud or a flower and a leaf. Cause you could definitely get the, the whole gist of this just by doing one petal. So I thought that might be kind of fun and interesting. You can let me know what you think about that. Um, but I thought that would be kind of, uh, be kind of interesting. Um, also I have some other things I want to ask you about because, um, I mean, this is so weird. My, my channel's been doing really well this year. And I think part of it is because I'm just doing whatever I feel like doing. You know, I'm like, I have really cut back on doing any sponsorships. I'm just kind of like, you know what? I'm going to make what I want to make and call it good. You know, I'm going to spend, if I'm going to work for somebody and work for myself, I'm going to, you know, put stuff, work on my classes and all that stuff. And just by having fun on YouTube, my channel's doing a lot better. I think people sense that lightness and the the more the more of the joy less of the job and I think that's kind of um, attracting uh, attracting people that you know just want to have fun and craft and you know use what they have and all that stuff so I think that's a part of it um, I've also been putting up some different content like uh, the Dollar Tree stuff so last week when I did the Dollar Tree haul I'm like I need to use this stuff because if I don't I'm gonna forget about it because 
when you impulse buy things like you do at the Dollar Tree. Um, granted, I was going in for those those cheap watercolors, but um, because I had some viewers ask about them. Um, but when you impulse buy things like that, it's only a dollar. It's kind of, it's the same thing when you go to the craft store and they have a huge clearance thing, and you're buying things for like ninety percent off. You're buying these things on impulse. You're not going there specifically for them, or even knowing you're going to find them. So you're not putting a lot of front loaded thought into them. Like if you're going to buy like say Derwent Lightfast, I like researched them for months and I like checked all this websites and I watched all the reviews and I was just like really really um putting a lot of thought and considering that purchase because it's so expensive so when they came I could not wait to use them I bought a few and I used them and used them used them decided if I wanted more and then I bought more and used them and used them used them then I bought the remaining ones I didn't have because I really like them put so much thought into them but when you're buying something on impulse you can buy, oh, what a great deal, this is so awesome, and then you get home and you put it away and you forget you ever had it you, because you you haven't, it hasn't taken up that much space in your brain yet. At least that's what I think. Um, so because I bought all that stuff at Dollar Tree, I'm like, I'll be a hypocrite if I buy that and I don't use it because that's not frugal. If you buy something on sale and you never use it, it's not a bargain. If you buy something full price but you use it all the time, that is way more frugal than buying something on sale and never using it. So I'm like, I'm gonna use that. So that weekend, last weekend, I actually played with the watercolors and I did this painting here. I'm gonna, my friend Cindy during our Zoom last night, she's like, you know, Lindsay, when you hold things in front of your face, during that chat, I know it's probably really weird and awkward, but they the camera focuses. So, um, so we did that interesting little piece with the cheap watercolors. It was a it was fun, but you know the weird thing is with that video, it's like I was just fooling around. I it was a first impression. I'm like these are only a dollar. I'm not going to spend weeks re, you know investigating these and reviewing them. They're just for fun. Um, and I did that painting and I actually got a comment where somebody said that they really liked this first impression unboxing type of video instead of like the more, a lot more, um, instead of the way I normally do videos, which is more, um, I use the product for a few weeks, I use them on different days, and then I do the review afterwards because, um, I, there's so many first impressions out there, but I personally love to watch the reviews like by um, Owings Art and the Art Gear Guide and Kimberly Crick. Um, I love their reviews because they're so, they've used them so much, they're so thoughtful, they've um, really put it through its paces before they've even turned on the camera that I really appreciate that because um, I know that they have really gone in depth and I know I can trust what they say, what they say or what their opinion. I mean, everyone has their own biases. Nobody's immune to that, but I can, I know they're going to have fewer biases because they've used it over a longer period of time and they've put a lot of time and effort into that. Um, so I, when I do reviews, I try to do the same thing too, because if someone's going to spend, you know, even like, you know, $30 on a set of colored pencils, you're better off to buy a set of 24 of like something by Derwent or Prismacolor or Faber-Castell than buy a 120 set from a company if it's not going to perform. So, you know, I want to make sure that I'm giving good information out there. So that's why I do the reviews the way that I do them. But I thought that was a really interesting comment. And it was funny because before I read that comment, um, and when I mention a comment, guys, if you left the comment that I mentioned, please don't feel like I'm criticizing you. I'm not. I'm totally like, wow, I never thought of that. That's a totally awesome topic. Thank you for bringing that up. I want to see what other people think. When I, when I was talking about like people falling asleep to my videos, I was not teasing anybody. I didn't mean, I wasn't offended. I was just kind of joking around. So I don't want to, when I, when I bring up like a comment, if you made the comment, please don't feel embarrassed or, um, or think I'm teasing you or anything, unless you said something really nasty and then shame on you, you should be embarrassed. But I'm just, I just like, wow, you opened my eyes. I never thought about like that people would prefer that to this because that never occurred to me. But it was so funny because before she left that comment, I got this in the mail because I do get things from different companies to review quite frequently. And um, I really like the stuff from this art, this company called Artsy. They're a company that, you know, they, they pick and choose stuff from Chinese factories and they bring them out. Um, but I had not seen something like this and I'm like, oh, I got to show this during sat chat because I'm going to review it, but I'm going to, but by the time I review it, it'll be dirty and used and it won't be as cute. And it's so freaking cute right now that I have to show it to you because my gosh. So it comes in this pouch and it's got a couple of extra water brushes, but look at this. So I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same quality uh, paint as like the fan palette. It's a ring on the back. I can just like Put it on like that. I hope it's focusing. Oh, I gotta put it near my face. Cindy says, put it near your face, Lindsay. So people will focus. Um, so look at this. It opens up like that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. You got this big mixing area. You got a sponge to wipe your water brush on and you got two mixing areas. This is going to be, I'm going to use this in the kayak. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then on each side, you've got five palettes. You got uh, metallics, you got pearls, 
you've got, you know, your regular colors. And then on the side, you've got more regular colors. There are some pastels. I'm sure the pastels are probably going to be chalky and disappointing. Or I, I did get the, the pastel set of the uh, the fan palette when it came out. I think it was by Meaden. Um and they all seem to be the same, the same paints, the same, like, even the same color numbers. I recognize those numbers. They're, they're going to be the same paints, I'm, like, 99% sure. Um, then I didn't care for the pastels, but uh, I thought that's so cute. And then it actually holds one water brush. So you bring the medium-sized water brush, you bring this, or you bring a little pouch, you could stick a little sketchbook in there. I thought that was so cute. And I wanted to show it while it's clean because it ain't going to be clean for long because I'm going to play with that sucker. Uh, but that's going to be a great little kayak porch painting type um, tight palette. I saw, I'm like, that, that is innovative. That is so cute. And I haven't seen this layout before in any of those, like, really super thin pan palette, uh, watercolor sets. And I have to say, the original one that I got was by Meaden, and it was, um, three or four years ago, and I use them a lot because I bring it with me to craft fairs, bring it with me on vacation, bring it with me on like little day trips and the kayak, and I have never gotten to the bottom of a pan of any of those colors, so it looks like there's hardly any paint there, but it's so, there. it's actually really concentrated and quite nice, so I want to show you that because it is going to be gross by the time you see it next, because I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't know if I can commit to doing first impressions, because I don't want to do two reviews on a product, and, um, and the thing with first impressions is I feel like they're very biased, just because if you're in a great mood that day when you open up that box and everything's so cute, like, I mean, if that paint's crap, you know, my first impression is this is so cute, I love it, look at this, and everything folds out, it's so adorable, you know, if it, I'll link that down below if you guys want to check it out, but, um, you know, that's a very positive first impression, but if I get to using it and I'm like, well, these paints really are chalky or they fade or they don't blend, you know, whatever, I, I'm pretty sure I know what kind of paint that is, so I do feel pretty comfortable linking it down below, um, but, you know, that can be very different than like, well, okay, you've used it for a couple of weeks and then what? Or you get very excited because you've got a product from a brand you've been very excited to get. And um, so you're so excited opening it, but then after using it for a few days, you're like, oh, these aren't as good as I thought they were. Or maybe you're in a bad mood when you open it up and you're like, eh, this side I was expecting more. Or um, so I figure like with me, if I use it over the course of a couple weeks. I'm going to use it on good days. I'm going to use it on bad days. I'm going to use it on days where my artwork is flowing. I'm going to use it on days where, you know, nothing goes right. And by kind of averaging out all of those impressions, then I'll get something that's a little bit closer to truth uh, in the review. So, um, but I'm really curious about your, about your opinions. Do you prefer unboxing first impressions or do you prefer more in-depth reviews or a mix or, um, or what? I'm just really curious because, um, you know, it's obviously I want to put out videos that people are going to enjoy. So, so let me know. Oh, something else I wanted to mention because last week a lot of people asked me what I use for face cream because I talked about going to Walmart and buying wrinkle cream and how I was out and I'd been using like some other lotion that I could buy at the grocery store because I hadn't been anywhere else. Um, and I thought I would bring it right down and show you it is Pons Rejuvenesce. I kept saying like, I'm not sure what it's, it's rejuvenate or rejuvenesce. It's got a red cap, you know? <laughs> I'm like, how can I be so clueless about something I put on my face every day, just not paying attention? But anyway, this is at seven ounces. It was $8 and change at Walmart. I'll see if I can find it on Amazon, and if so, I'll link it. But um, yeah, it's right with all the other Pond's products. And I've used this for about, I don't know, I think about 10 years. Whenever it came out, I think I started using it when it was brand new. It used to have a silver band on it and a silver cap but they changed it uh, a couple of years, maybe just a year or two ago they changed it. I don't, I'm really bad with time. Um, I don't remember, but, uh, but this works really well. It says it firmer looking skin in two weeks. I don't know about that, but, um, but it does seem to, I do like the texture of my skin more using this than like the olive Olay. Uh, but that doesn't have sunscreen in it. There's no sunscreen in that. So, um, you might want to use that at night and use, like a, a sunscreen in the day if you're outside a lot. So um, just want to put it out there. Take care of your skin. It's much better to prevent damage than to try to fix it later. And my kids, I have my kids use Pons. I am not sponsored by Pons. I'm not a makeup guru. I have no training in makeup. I have no like clout experience or certification. That's just my opinion. That is all, you know, <laughs> let me just disclaim all of that. Um, I did get also asked, I get asked so much about my lipstick. Um, honestly, it's like, I think Dark Wine, I did buy, I found a new tube of Dark Wine, it's by Wet n Wild, it's like a dollar. <laughs> it's so cheap. But um, but I don't use lip liners or eyeliners. I use, so sometimes I'll use an eyeliner like a, like a, 
like a really soft brown color but generally um, I just I don't use lip liners because I think as you get older liners look really harsh and not flat not as flattering so um, I use a brush I use a lip brush actually the lip brush I use um, it was a Jane Davenport like travel brush and um, I didn't like it with watercolor so I washed it really well and I use it as lip brush it's like a golden tacklon type bristle and it's beautiful for applying um, lipstick. So that's what I use. I put on the lipstick and then I just kind of like, you know, define the edges with the lip brush. And I use, actually I use paint brushes for my eye makeup. I use Golden Taclon, like it's probably like a number two flat, I think, for my eyeliner. And um, I do use like fluffy makeup brushes for my, you know, just the, the brown like up here. But like the, I use like a, I either use a navy or I'll use black and like a bright blue, like on top of my eye, my, um, my eyelids. I just try to go really close and get like, um, kind of do eyeliner with the black and the blue. So it, my eyes are very gray, so I feel like it helps get a little more color into them. And then for my eyebrows, I use an angled paintbrush, just like a quarter inch angled golden tacklon brush with brown, um, with brown eyeshadow and I fill in my brows because my brows are so puny. I don't have to pluck them or anything. They are so, so puny. Um, I wish I had those in like brick shields, like really thick eyebrows, but um, sadly, no, <laughs> I do not. So it's, it's just nice. I feel like it's a lot softer and more natural looking than using a pencil. So give it a try, ladies. If you're over 40, I think it's, I think it's helpful. I think it looks a little bit more soft and less harsh. Um, but I'm not a makeup guru, but people asked, a lot of people asked, which I thought was very strange, but, um, there you have it. Oh, I did learn a new blush trick because I use, um, I do use a little contour, but like flicking the brush from up here and down and just putting a little blush back here actually lifts your, your cheekbones up a little bit more. Cause I used to until like last week, put the blush right here to make my cheeks look like bigger. Um, but putting it back here actually makes my cheekbones higher, I think. So I saw that on somebody's, some beauty YouTubers. I don't even know why that came up on my things. I usually don't watch makeup, but that came up on my, on my YouTube page, uh, homepage. And I'm like, oh, what? Oh, I think the title of the video was something like, uh, where you put your blush totally changes the shape of your face. I'm like, well, I gotta learn about that. Um, so I did, and uh, I have no idea if it made a difference. I th in my head it did, anyway. Um, oh my gosh, I had a list. I don't think I've talked about a single thing on it though. We're 17 minutes in. Oh, gotta love sat chats, right? Oh, let's talk about, uh, Dalton Ward. Oh, so I totally got on a tangent. We were talking about Dollar Tree supplies and using them right off the bat because otherwise you'll forget you bought them because you only paid a dollar and like, you know, just goes, you know, oh, cool thing in your brain, out your brain as soon as you put it away, right? So I did make a bunch of cards. That video is up on my channel. Let me get a good one here. That one's kind of cute. I think that's really cute. With those rub-ons, the gold rub-ons. Um, I've got to upload a short. I've got a short to put on YouTube. It's um, it's my rub-on trick, which I show you in that long video, but I will be posting a short on that. I love the glitter, man. This is the reason, this card's the reason I need to vacuum right here. I'll put it in front of my face there, like Cindy says. <laughs> and then uh, I really, really like this one. This is with those stamps. Those stamps stamped pretty well. The, um, this one in my face here, this one with the dream catcher stamped the best and it's embossed so it's kind of shiny. Um, I think it's because it's more line work. The butterflies and the, um, the, what was the other one? It was butterflies and birds. Those stamped all right. What I would say though is um, when you're getting the Dollar Tree stamps, if you're a beginner stamper, I would definitely recommend getting ones that are more thinner lines because if you have more dark area, then you have more options, more, more opportunity for your ink to beat up or for there to be any issues with the surface of the stamp. But if you wash your stamps, and use pigment ink, it should work pretty well. If you're still getting spots that aren't stamping well, take a uh, like a pink pearl eraser and, or even a pencil eraser, a pink pencil eraser, or even that, like a nail file, like an emery board, um, not the metal files, but an emery board, and you can gently scuff it and it will help hold your ink. But, um, you know, use a pigment ink and give it plenty of time when you press it down for the ink to transfer and you should be good. Uh, I didn't have really any issues. They are cheap silicone, they're not photopolymer. Sorry, clearly just kicked the camera there. Um, but yeah, for a buck, I think they were definitely worth it. I did show you those stamps in the long video. I showed you how the other one stamped out, I do believe. So you could see that too. But, um, and I also posted it on Instagram, but I don't know if everybody goes everywhere. So um, there's that. Oh, let's take a look at my list now that we're 20 minutes into the video. Let's see if there's something I actually wanna talk about. Um, I actually recorded this earlier, but um, 
I had my camera on the wrong setting. Remember like a couple weeks ago I did a video and like my face was out of focus for most of it and I didn't care because I was out of wrinkle cream and I'm like well let's just smear some Vaseline on that lens and call that good. <laughs> I figured it was like a little happy accident um, <clears throat> but I thought yeah I probably should try to be in focus today uh, and then uh, and then I didn't have my, I ran out of my foundation that was darker and had turned down my light because it looked like a ghost. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's the, the joy of YouTubing, friends. Don't you want to join? <laughs> don't you want to be part of this? Uh, what was I talking about? I don't know. Um, ping pong is totally awesome and I love it and I'm playing every day and I've even got sore muscles. That's how much I'm playing ping pong. So today I actually decided to, and this isn't even on my list either. <laughs> Why do I write a list? Um, I decided it would be fun to play with my non-dominant hand, and it was great. I'm telling you what, playing ping pong, if you're if you're right-handed like I am, playing ping pong with your left hand is totally awesome. It's like totally new little neurons being formed and, and, and things happening in your brain. I can totally feel brain stuff happening when I'm playing with my left hand. It's like, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's just trying something new. It's just great. Oh, I went ice skating this week, kind of. I don't think I told the story. I think I was starting to tell the story the last time I filmed the clip, but um, I'm thinking about maybe trying to, uh, it's already four o'clock. I don't know. It might be a little too late, but I, Wednesday I'm thinking, well, geez, it's 40 degrees out. It's the warmest day we've had all like month. Um, I think I'm going to do ice skating because somebody has been like maintaining this great ice patch in the middle of our pond. And, um, and I've been seeing pictures on Facebook. It looks great. So Lila and I went down. I borrowed Maisie's skates because my skates are decorative now. I've been putting them on the porch <laughs> Christmas time and putting um oh I think I just like I think I just like sneezed or something um uh where is I going oh uh yeah I take my skates are like you know decorations now so I borrowed her hockey skates and um, I'm like oh I hope I don't fall down and break something um which wasn't a problem because the ice was very slushy on top and you couldn't really get up any speed. So uh, I, I, today it's cold, so I'm thinking that it's probably really good condition. So I might try to get out and ice skate today or maybe tomorrow if we don't get very much, um, if we don't get any snow or anything. But that's just try something new. I really think you should try something new. Try new things as you get older. Maybe not ice skating as you're getting older if you've never ice skated before, but things like that, like playing ping pong with a non-dominant hand. Probably wiping, oh, I'm not even wiping, wiping any makeup off. I must have missed a spot. <laughs> I don't do like I try to like I put the makeup on I'll dab it on and then I here's another pro tip for me for your makeup and then I take a uh, makeup wedge from the Dollar Tree the same ones I used to make my homemade blending sponges and I like get it wet and I rinse out I wring out the water and then I spread it all out so I don't get a lot uh, because again I think as you get older you don't want so much makeup on you don't want so much foundation because it can seep into the nooks and crannies and accentuate our wrinkles so you just want that very thin thin veil of um of of makeup actually i think when you're younger too i mean because why would you want to cover your beautiful young skin if you're like you know in your 20s or your teens or something like that when i was a teenager i would get the uh, the cover girl press powder and i would like because it would come with a sponge too and i would wet the sponge and i would get it on the press powder and then i would just lightly put it on there so yeah i guess i like to dilute makeup um so it's not so like cakey and thick. I don't like things on my face. Like I, the, I will have to, I wash my face like usually shortly after doing sat chat because I makeup really annoys me and never used to. I don't know why like recently in my adulthood, probably because probably when I started working from home and didn't put makeup on every day, um, like mascara, just having mascara on annoys me. And like even earrings a lot of times just having, these are really light. So, um, and I didn't make these. These are, uh, my sister-in-law had purchased these for me before she passed away. Um, so I cherish them. They're really lightweight clay earrings, um, polymer clay, but, um, oh, that makes me sad. Um, where was I? Oh, so yeah, having things like heavy earrings, jewelry, um, rings other than my engagement wedding ring, um, which I'm used to because I've been wearing them for like, you know, 20, over 20 years. Um, so, but to have like makeup on, I don't know, it just kind of like it annoys me. I like lipstick. That doesn't annoy me. Lips because I always have like chapstick on anyway. Um, but yeah, I just get really annoyed with like mascara and things like that, like near my eyes and on my face. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I guess I always like to kind of go light on that because it's just, it kind of uh, kind of aggravates me, I guess, a little bit. I don't like to be irritated or aggravated. Um, but I also don't like the way I look without makeup. So, you know, gotta, yeah, you gotta have a little bit of a, uh, what is it? Compromise. Oh, I want to show you 
what we are going to do for Sketchbook Sunday, because I've already filmed it, and the uh, real-time version for this is up in Critique Club, so this one I did in Derwent Light Fast last week, I didn't film it, and then I decided to film it and actually live narrate it for uh, Critique Club, so that's up right now in Critique Club, if you're a member you can check that out, I'll link to that down below if you want to see it, um, and it was nice because I did this just at my leisure, and then this one I live narrated, and I think it's a, it's really nice when I when you've done something once and you've practiced it, then it's easier to narrate it, and talk about it while you're doing it because you don't have to think you're just you've already done it so you just need to describe it after that so that worked out really well and because I'd asked people if they would like critique club members if they would like to see this in critique club and maybe like for sketchbook Sunday a time lapse and I got a lot of good response and then I had a couple people say Lindsay what about that second that you did like back in January back when you had art block and you shared a picture of that what about doing that and I thought well, that's a good idea I did this in watercolor crayon the cheap Joe's watercolor crayon and then I thought, you know, that would be really good in Prismacolor. And so I was just practicing with the Prismacolors here because I was deciding which one I wanted to do. And because I had done the first one in Derwent Light Fast, this was the Derwent Light Fast one. Um, and when I was doing that, I'm like, oh, I wonder how that would go in Prismacolor. And I thought, well, that would be fun because I'm curious. It's something I'm interested in. And then I could, you know, I've already done it once with a different brand. So it would be very easy to just kind of describe it while I was doing it. And I thought, well, why don't I do a few of those petals? Because this is very repetitive. So in Critique Club, there's a real-time version of doing the petal here. So you know how to do this kind of flower if you want to. And then I do um, this one real-time. So you can follow along with me if you want to. And then it'll be time-lapse. It's all time-lapse in Sketchbook Sunday. So you can watch that and see if, you, if it's a project you want to do. I know a lot of Critique Club members will watch it on Sketchbook Sunday first, so they get the lay of the land, and then they'll go into Critique Club, and then they'll follow along with the um, with the real time video. So it's there if you want it. I'll, I'll link it down below, and you can check it out, um, or wait till Sunday to see the time lapse and see if it's something you're interested in. Did I show you this? I am like so confused. I filmed, like, I filmed. I'm losing it here, guys. I filmed. <laughs> And I was out of focus because I had the wrong settings on, so I decided to refilm. And I can't remember if I told you about this or not, so apologize. I apologize if I've already mentioned this. So I was playing with some pencils on pastel mat. Thank you, Mimi, for the pastel mat. Um, never used it before. And this is what I was doing on my crafty Zoom last night. And I'm thinking about doing a tutorial maybe of like one flower and a leaf or something, working some more onto this. So let me know if you're interested in that in the uh, comments below. And I want to show you what, where my reference came from because I've mentioned these before, but I think it bears repeating. These books, Artist Photo Reference, I get them on Amazon used. Um, I did buy a couple from North, North Light Books when they were in print, but they're they're out of print now. But you can get them anywhere between like five and twenty five dollars, depending on like who's selling them. Uh, used. I highly recommend the series of books. These are the Magnolia pictures. I'm gonna. I've been like kind of picking. I did those two. I'll probably do one of these or maybe even that um, and add it to the composition. But it's nice because it, it's no frills, but it gives you a lot of different like versions of like they'll take a some flowers, but they give you different angles, different versions, so that you can make your own compositions from it. Um, I started off with the wildlife and the flowers. I got those from North Light Books when they were new, and then um, bought the ones on Amazon over the years um, when I found them used, which they usually do sh show up used all the time, so they're definitely worth grabbing. Um, so there we go. We've talked for 28 minutes about nothing. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll link, I'll try to link to everything I talked about down below. Maybe even some other things that I thought I talked about. Then who knows? It's a crapshoot here. It really is. Sat chat, the crapshoot of videos on the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.